All right, I want to talk about optimization and do a really interesting problem uh, using calculus to optimize a function so we can figure out some information about it. So, all right, here's, here's what I want to do. Let's say I am, I'm going to give you the function that f of x equals rad x. Pretty simple function, right? So f of x equals rad x. I'm handing that to you. And I say, all right, on the graph of f of x rad x, which... Let's just go ahead and, and do a, a really basic plot of this graph. Here's what it looks like, right? This look about right? Okay, so here's the f of x rad x. And we'll, we will label it. Okay, because so we have f of x equals rad x here. And I want to know, on this graph, I'm going to... I'm going to smash a point, okay? And I'm going to say right here at the point 4, 0. So this I should just write 4, I suppose. Uh, so at 4, 0. I've got a little point on my graph. Here's a point 0, 0, right? Because here's 0. And I want to know, here's, I'm sorry, let me just give you some more information. Here's the point 4, 2 on this graph. So, so far it's a pretty simple graph. Now, I want to know what point on this graph, what x, y coordinate value is closest to my point, my point uh, 4, 0 right here. So, what is the closest to this point. How do I figure that out? Well, this is the point I desire, right? This is the one I need to figure out the information for. So let's go ahead and do a couple of things. We've got our function, and we're basically trying to figure out some point on this graph, and it's going to be about, you know, somewhere like right here, and it's going to be the closest point on the graph. We know it's, you know, it's not 4, 2, it's not 0, 0. We don't, we, we know it's not one of these things. So plugging in values is a terrible idea. We can just say, okay, let's go ahead and just start plugging in some stuff and hope that's close, you know. Oh, uh, let's see, what comes right before 4? So 3, red, 3, that sounds good, you know. No, these are terrible ideas. We need, we can make, use calculus to make our lives a whole lot easier here. So let's optimize this function by using, I think the distance formula will be a good idea, and then we can just use some implicit differentiation. So the distance formula is going to be a great idea. So let's remember the distance formula. The distance formula is pretty simple. It says that d equals the square root of a whole bunch of stuff. The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So this is our distance formula right here. But you know what? This also is equal to, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that this is equal to d squared. And we can just kill this little... Uh, uh, radical over here. d squared is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? Yeah, of course it is. So this is this is going to be the, the better function for us. We'll put a little star by that. This is going to be the one that we're going to want right here. So let's go ahead and start working from this point. Well, new page here. We said that d squared is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So we've got that. So let's go ahead and plug in a couple of values. So for this problem, that means that d squared is going to be equal to x minus 4 squared plus rad x minus 0 squared. Which, if you're wanting to get technical about things and you wanted to use the original formula, of course you could. So we'll have a little aside here. This is exactly the same thing as saying that d equals radical x minus 4 squared 
plus rad x minus 0 squared. You know, this is the same thing, but there's just absolutely no point. That's going to cause us a lot more work when we, when we go to do our implicit differentiation. So, Now, why are we using implicit differentiation? Well, go ahead and, and watch here with me and see why this is useful. We got this x and this rad x because on any graph, the rate of change of the line is always x f of x, right? Well, what's f of x in this function? In this function, f of x is equal to rad x. So in this case, on our function, our line, any point on our line, is given by x rad x, right? So we're interested in that derivative at that point. So that's where these x and this rad x came from. Since we need the derivative, we're just going to implicitly differentiate with respect to d. So let's go ahead and do that d squared. What's the derivative of that? Well, that's going to be 2d, right? Bring down that 2, but we're not done. Since this is implicit, we have to add a d prime, right? So 2d d prime equals, and then 2x minus 4, right, times x minus 4 prime. Now, this is totally useless. What is Nate, we're just writing this for the usefulness of it uh, uh, in understanding things. It's not useful for our problem, and I'll explain that in a second. Plus, now I'm just going to say plus 1. Why am I just saying plus 1 here? All right, well, think about it this way. Minus 0, is that going to change anything? Eh, no. And then uh, rad x, we're, we're taking the derivative of rad x squared here is all we're doing, and this is just going to reduce down to 1. So that's why I just went ahead and wrote a 1. Now, do we need? why do we need this uh, little... Uh, x minus 4 here. Well, we don't, of course, because negative 4, this is just going to be a constant, so it's 0, so it doesn't matter. And then x uh, minus 0 doesn't matter. x prime is just 1, so it's multiplying at times 1. So this is useless. So we can get rid of that. So we're, really, this is just 2d d squared equals 2 x minus 4 plus 1. And this is, of course, going to give us that 2d d prime is equal to 2x minus uh, 8 plus 1. So, okay, 2x minus 7 That's what we end up with here, 2x minus 7. So let me write that up here because I think the watermark might have screwed that up. All right, so we have 2x minus 7, and we know that that is 2d d prime. is 2x minus 7. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we, we still need to figure out d prime. So by that logic, d prime is just going to be 2x minus 7 over 2d. So that's going to give us a critical value when 2x minus 7 is 0. We don't need to worry about the 2d on the bottom because that would just give us an asymptote and, so, and it's going to be undefined there and that's not useful for us. Uh, is radical x undefined anywhere? No, of course not. So we don't need to worry about that. Well, not for this, you know, not for this function out of that interval. So we need to set this top part equal to 0 to find our critical value. And so 2x minus 7 equals 0. Well, that's going to give us an x at 7 over 2. So 7 over 2 is our CV. Oh, we're done! Yay! No, we're not. No, we're not done. We still have to do one more thing. Let's go ahead and make a little sign chart over here and say 7 over 2, 2, 4, and over here we have d prime, right? So what's d prime going to be? for 2? Well, it's going to be negative, right? What's d prime going to be for 4? Well, it's going to be positive. So, looking at our graph, it would look like this, right, at that point, theoretically, for con points, uh, purposes of concavity. So this is going to be a minimum. So, we can say at x equals 7 over 2, d is a min. Yes, good, d is a minimum. So we've minimized the function, we've optimized the function, we've minimized the distance in between here and here, so we know that our point of minimum distance 
is 7 over 2. Rad, 7 over 2. And that's all there is to it.